Angelo, uh, what, was, what do you think the difference was tonight defensively for you guys, and, and what did Josh maybe add to the, to the mix for you guys on that end of the floor? I mean, yeah, you know, you know what you're going to get from Josh. Um, I mean, DeMar DeRozan didn't play, you know, so it, of course the other guys on their team to step up and make plays. Um, I think eventually we're going to start the game we were a little lack, lackadaisical, but Eventually, uh, we start to get over that hump and, and lock in. Like I said, let you know how valuable Josh is. Just from a from a team psyche standpoint, after the rough two weeks you've had with Carl's injury, Josh was out. Just getting a win tonight to to kind of get over the hump. How how does that feel? And and just going forward here with the win. Uh, it was a great one. Great one. Good to get one. But um, try to keep a so what what's next mentality. You know. We, be the team, now it's better for the next one. And uh, have that same you know, mentality and you know, detailed focus you know, going into the next game, no matter who we play. Once we got that that, that feel of what it, what it feels like to get one, so why not run some off? That's how I feel. John, go ahead. Angel, I think you guys are down about nine with nine minutes to go uh, in the fourth there. I mean, how did you guys – after all that's kind of gone wrong the last seven games, how did you kind of band together there and 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 get back into it? Uh, I mean, we just you know tried to stay solid. I don't think there was anything extra we did or you know that we didn't do. I think we just stayed solid. You know, that's one of our models, trying to be solid. Solid is enough. So we stayed solid. We had a nice lineup out there that you know was solid and got stops and you know limited them for. Multiple possession, multiple shots in one possession. You know, and that's that's the name of the game: rebounding, and free throws, and that's what we did. Uh, and then Ryan said uh, after the game that you know uh, he wants this kind of defensive grit to be the standard here that you guys have going forward. What do you think the key is to just kind of duplicating the, the efforts that you guys had tonight? I mean, first we got to stay healthy. We got to get healthy. You know, I think that plays a major role as well. You know consistency and it makes it makes coach it makes coach's job easier. You know when we're not healthy and he has to mix and match all these other guys that you know maybe throw into the fire and not comfortable with their position. It's hard to coach that, but when a guy healthy, you know, 10, 15 guys and eight, nine, ten man rotation, it's easy to know what you got. You know going into games. So first off, just getting healthy. You know, trying to stay COVID free and um, you know attack have that business approach towards every team, every game we're playing, no matter who it is. We'll go Jason and Britt. Jace, go ahead. D'Angelo, we're seeing teams be pretty greatly affected by COVID right now. Um, some rosters are getting really thin. Does that just kind of heighten your guys' senses in terms of, like, trying to do everything you can, I guess, to make sure it doesn't happen to you? Yeah, and I think our protocol here has been, you know, super strict from day one. You know, with Robbie on board, he's, you know, he's – He's, you know, he's, he's relaying that message every day to us, you know, trying to stay as, you know, as sticking to protocol as much as we can. So I think that's, that's the easy part, you know, uh, it's on the road and, you know, when you're not around the team, when you're, when you're, you have to take it in consideration for others. So just trying to continue to stick to protocol and control, control that. And then Carl talked a, a lot yesterday about how badly he wanted to come back and, and speed up his recovery to get back to try to help you guys win games. Um, so I guess with that, knowing what he was doing for you guys, how good does it feel to come on and get a win tonight for him and as well as the team, I guess, in general? Man, he, was, he didn't look like he was hurt yesterday. <laughs> uh, we could use that one hand he got any night. So, I mean, he's, he's, you know what he's capable of, you know, any given night. You know, like I said, let's get healthy and allow us to – create some type of consistent continuity to our offense and defense, you know, and um, it makes coaches' job easier as well. So it's good to have big fella back. Good for him to start, you know, getting his, getting his rhythm back in motion. And it's a long season in one of those. I don't think he should be rushing anything. Uh, Brent, go ahead. Elo, one of the things that Ryan said was key to the fourth quarter was the way you were, Ricky, were in sync together. And I noticed – with about a minute left in the, the game, you guys had a, a pretty extended conversation on the sideline, looked about positioning or something. What was that about? I mean, we were all you know, just a three-headed snake trying to you know come to one one conclusion. You know, Ricky may have an opinion, I may have one, and coach may have one. We just try to dissect it the best way we can. 
you know, and, and, and have a good, a great finished product with that. You know, I think with, with, a, with a heady player and how much experience Ricky has, I'm always learning from him. So I try to listen and, and, and see where I, I can, you know, help make the game easier for him and vice versa. So when we're in those positions at the end of the game, it's not a foreign position for us where we know how to play off each other and be effective. It looked like uh, you were going over some footwork or something, or way to t- maybe take an angle on a screen or something, just by the way you guys were moving your bodies. Um, yeah, probably. Uh, I don't really remember what you're talking about, but probably. Uh, yeah. We're just trying to get it done. Uh, we'll go. Uh, oh, we'll go, Dane, and then uh, last one to John. Dane, go ahead. Yeah, I was just curious. For, for you as a shooter in, in the way you shoot is does having your shot be contested maybe impact you less than it does other people when they have a, a hand in their face? I mean, a good contest can affect any shot. So I'm not the fastest or the most athletic. So somebody's, I have to get used to, you know, shooting you know, over good defense because I'm not blowing around, blowing by you or elevating on my shot to shoot over your good defense. I have to, you know, be correct. So, um, I mean, it's, I'm used to it. I, I can say that. I'm not sure if other players are, but a great contest is, you know, all you can do in this is you not really block a lot of shots and guys are too smart for you to, you know, uh, commit to trying to block a shot and then they pump fake and then we look, you know, crazy on film. So, just trying to, you know, use my advantages. We'll go last question to John. John, go ahead. Yeah, D'Angelo, I didn't get a chance to ask you this the other night, but um, you put a tweet out earlier in the week of kind of reacting to the Washington, D.C. stuff, and I know that the team has had some discussions about, you know, what you guys saw there. I just wondered if you wanted to share any of your thoughts about what you saw unfold there, what was going through your mind, and, and what you think about kind of this point in history that we're, we're all in right now. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not in any rush right now. I think it's the perfect time to do this. We got, we got John, Dane, Britt, Jace, Chris. I, I'd like to get, get you guys' opinion first, and then um, we can play it that way. Because, I mean, we obviously know what my opinion is. We know what everybody else is having the experience. But we don't get to hear you guys' opinion on that stuff. So I'd love to hear your opinion, and, you know, we can play tennis with that. I mean, when I when I saw it, I, I think I put something out, too, because I saw um, Cam Reynolds, who used to play here and now plays with the Bucks, kind of put something out about how, you know, it was really interesting that the way that some police, uh, you know, kind of reacted to Black Lives Matter protests and, and things of that nature with real force and did not seem to provide the same sort of resistance to uh, the white protesters that were or rioters that were storming the Capitol there and there was some hypocrisy there and to me I mean I don't know what you guys feel but I'm trying to put myself in your guys's shoes and I can only you know be heartbreaking to try and you know think what you guys are seeing after what you all experienced this summer and you were on the front lines in Louisville and doing a lot of different things I mean to me it's quite frankly you know both heartbreaking and and you know just brings a rage about you to see it that way and see people treated differently. That's how, that's how I looked at it. Respect that. What about you, Dane? Honestly, for me, it's embarrassing as a white person. Um, I, I think, I think it just shined a really sad light on um, just a, a separation in our society um, based you know, based on race, and um, I'm 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 embarrassed. That's that's mostly for the country. That's that's mostly my opinion. I don't I don't I'm not a expert on the topic, but that's my main emotion. Respect that. What about you, Brit OG? I think it's uh, the end of a uh, domestic terrorism is a logical conclusion of the last five years. Uh, I think that you have a situation here where uh, um, there's been a, a lot of uh, baited language 
freighted language, the ability to people to uh, indulge in their baser instincts, been encouraged by our leaders. Um, and it's reached this point because there hasn't been enough pushback about it. And I think that uh, this is what it came to. It had to be shoved in people's faces uh, on the biggest forum possible with the uh, most logical uh, way for this thing to end is with a lot of people trying to overturn a result that had been settled by 60 courts uh, election as with almost every single election that's happened, you know, you know it's been uh, 60 years since uh, white people voted for a democratic uh, president to win. Uh, the black vote is what denies Republicans office every single time. And so the fact that it didn't happen this time, I think uh, it gave in to their base and their base uh, turned to violence when they couldn't get it any other way. Respect that. That's you, Jace. Yeah, I agree with a lot of what Britt just said. It's kind of, as much as anything, it was alarming um, that this somebody, I mean, it comes from the highest office, so that probably starts with it, but it's just a bunch of misinformation being spewed, and and because it fits kind of the narrative that these people want, um, they're going to rally behind that, and they just become so charged up that they can do something like go at the nation's capital, um, and that many people can gather together and be inspired by kind of hate and then also kind of just false information and just be mad that something didn't go their way. And then there's somebody saying like this, it didn't go our way because of this and this. And even if that information is based on absolutely nothing, they can rally together and, you know, try to basically overturn something that was decided by the majority of our people, our democracy and take it down because they didn't like it. Um, and nobody stopped them. And I don't think anybody even would have had that strong of a response to this if it wasn't the end of a four-year term anyway um, and only because that's ending does it feel like people actually want to stand up to it or have the guts I guess to do anything about it um, even how little that might be um, but I just think that's alarming I think it shows where our country is and it's not a good spot um, so that I don't I don't know how it's going to look going forward for everybody but you can just see it happening again really easily and that's I don't know that's that's not a good thought. Cruz? Yes, yeah, so back in college, I studied history and I studied journalism. And I think the, the biggest thing that I took away, I, I felt very numb kind of watching everything that was going on uh, personally. Um, I've been just saddened to see, one, that people don't remember history in this country or the way that we teach history in this country needs to be altered. Um, and two, the way people get their information as somebody who's, who studied and worked in journalism for over a decade now, we have to do something about that. And I think this was the culmination of all those efforts in one sad moment uh, happening this week. And I think one of the images that, that's, that's stuck with me was seeing somebody carry the Confederate flag around outside the nation's capital and just all that that flag uh, has stood for um, since it since it came about, and the fact that even back in the Civil War, they they fought hard to prevent that specific flag from being flown in that specific building, and here it is in 2021, and somebody's parading around the Capitol with the Confederate flag. I think it was just a a sad culmination of 160 years of divide in this country whether it be along racial lines, economic lines. Um, it, was a, it was a really, really sad, gut-punching kind of moment for me to, to see personally. I respect that. Hey, I appreciate y'all. I appreciate y'all um, discussing that with me, but um, I'm just going to keep it short with my opinion on it. Well, for one, I feel like it, it was let, like we let that happen, you know, as a, as a country, as a you know, higher power or whatever you want to say, we let that happen. It brought eyes to, you know, the balance of the 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 unfairness of, you know, where we're living in this country. It just brought it just brought more eyes to it. Um I will say that with all this going on, it's it's triggered a lot of um attention towards, you know, just just this topic in general. And it's and it's allowing us to 
sit back and think on how we're going to respond to it as a nation one, as a as an individual, as a teacher, as a, anything you do, your voice is going to matter because a lot of young kids nowadays aren't, they probably won't see this. They probably don't understand what's going on, but it is a revolution. It is a, a change. It is, a, it is something that, you know, it, I feel like it only can go up from here. You know, you know, being able to, to, to recognize what's right and what's wrong in these situations and then seeing how people are taking advantage of the wrong thing to do. Like, it's just simple. Like there's right and there's wrong. You know, why, why, why be wrong when everybody's watching? Why, why say the wrong thing when everybody's listening, you know, um, and this topic is so touchy. I can go on for hours. I can go on for however long about it, but the fact that we're bringing attention and, and, and a lot of people are being educated on this topic that aren't educated, the fact that some of you guys are embarrassed, I think that's that's the right step, you know, in, in the right direction to, you know, keep seeing change and keep, you know, bringing um, awareness to these topics. So. It's not nothing. It's not. It's not a lot we can do, you know. Besides what we can do, and just bring awareness is all we can do at this point. So, I appreciate you guys' opinions, and I appreciate y'all y'all knowledge to to it too. You know, y'all y'all not y'all not naive to what's really going on. So, I appreciate y'all.